the foundation of authentic assessment revolves around evaluating a student's ability to apply what they have learned in mathematics to a real-world context. Rather than root learning and passive test-taking, authentic assessment math test focus on a student's analytical skills and the ability to integrate what they have learned along with creativity with written and oral skills. Also, evaluated are the results of collaborative efforts of group project. It is not just learning the process of computation that is important to know, but also how to take the finished product and apply it to another situation. This need for an improved test to accurately assess a student's growth has been developed. It is called the Authentic Assessment Math Test. Fill in the blank tests do not often accurately reflect the individual situation's understanding of the material. It reflects whether a student is successful at memorization. Instead of tests that focus on recalling specific facts, the Authentic Assessment Math Test has students demonstrate the various skills and concepts they have learned and explain when it would be appropriate to use those facts and problem-solving skills in their own lives. So, to better understand the content of this video, here are the learning objectives. So before I discuss what is authentic assessment, I'm going to ask you what makes an assessment authentic. Something is considered authentic if it is a believable replica of something else with significant value. You're not eating at an authentic Thailand restaurant if the food doesn't accurately represent the culture it is modeling. In our classrooms, this translates into creating past, projects, structures, and learning environments that mirror those seen in the real life problems our disciplines address. Assessment is considered authentic if it analyzes student learning in a manner that is consistent with how our disciplines function outside of an academic environment. Authentic assessment is a form of assessment in which students are asked to perform real-world tasks that demonstrate meaningful application of essential knowledge and skills. So, we can use authentic assessment when we want students to be able to use the acquired knowledge and skills in the real world. Our assessments have to also tell us if students can apply what they have learned in authentic situations. It is different from traditional assessment. So we all know that traditional assessments refers to multiple choice tests, fill in the blanks, true or false, matching type, and some writing prompts. So in these cases, students typically select an answer or recall information to complete the assessment. So, if we were coaches and we thought skills to our students to perform, we would not assess the students' performance by giving them a fill-in-the-blank type of test. Instead, we would put them out in the field or course and ask them to perform. Now, I am going to discuss the six ways to use authentic assessment math in the classroom. Several state assessment programs are currently engaged in developing new modes of assessment that reflect the emerging consensus on mathematics instruction and evaluation. So, the first one is performance assessment. Students can demonstrate what they have learned and how to solve problems through a collaborative effort in solving a complex problem together. Not only do they learn how to work in a team but also how to brainstorm and utilize their separate grains of knowledge to benefit the whole. Second, short investigations. Typically, a short investigation starts with a basic math problem or can be adapted to any other school subject in which the students can demonstrate how he or she has mastered the basic concepts and skills. As the teacher, ask the students to interpret, calculate, explain, describe, or predict whatever it is they are analyzing. So these are generally 60, 60 to 90 minute tasks for an individual or group projects on which to work independently, writing answers to questions and then interviewed separately. 
Next is open response questions. A teacher can assess the student's real-world understanding and how the analytical processes relate by in a quiz setting, requesting open responses questions like a brief written or oral answer, a mathematical solution, a drawing, a diagram, chart, or graph. So, these open-ended questions can be approximately 15-minute assessments and can be converted into a larger-scale project. Next is portfolios. So, as students learn concepts throughout the school year, they can be documented and will reveal progress and improvements as well as allow for self-assessment, edits, and revision. So, they can be recorded in a number of ways including journal writing, review by peers, artwork and diagrams, group reports, students' notes and outlines, and rough drops to finish work. Next is self-assessment. So, after the teacher has clearly explained and provided the expectations prior to the project and then, once the projects are complete, ask the students to evaluate their own projects and participation. Responding to the following questions will help students learn to assess themselves and their work objectively. So, here's the questions. What was the most difficult part of this project for you? What do you think you should do next? Or, if you could do this task again, would you do anything differently? If yes, why? So, the last way to use authentic assessment math in the classroom is multiple choice questions. So, usually, multiple choice questions do not reflect an authentic assessment math context. But, there are multiple choice questions being developed that reveal an understanding of the mathematical ideas required as well as integrating more than one concept. So these questions are designed to take about two or three minutes each. So we can now to the four threats developed through authentic assessment math test. This situational type of learning in which students are learning lessons and how to solve real-life problems can be utilized in mathematics education. These ideas are presented as follows. First, thinking and reasoning. Causing students to interact in such activities that include gathering data, exploration, investigation, interpretation, reasoning, modeling, designing, analyzing, formation of hypothesis, use of trial and error, generalization, and solution checking. Next is settings. It allows students to work individually or in smaller groups. Next is mathematical tools. The students will learn to use symbols, tables, graphs, drawings, calculators, and computers. Last is attitudes and disposition. So, students in this type of learning environment learn persistence, self-regulating behaviors and reflections, participation, and special for learning various kinds of situations. In short, the students work to construct new knowledge that is integrated with their prior knowledge. The role of the teacher is that of a facilitator. The learning helps students acquire mathematical power to cope with ambiguity, to perceive patterns, and to solve unconventional problems. Traditionally, assessment has been derived from the curriculum. However, assessment has not been part of a feedback loop linked to instruction. It is now widely believed that assessment must be an integral part of teaching so that it is used as a tool not merely to collect data, but also to influence instructions. This requires developing and implementing assessment tasks that measure students' productivity, their performance on tasks that require mathematical thinking in pursuit of a result that is a meaning to the students. Because these tasks have essentially the same character as instructional tasks, they also have meaning for teachers and therefore are useful for improving instructions. Authentic assessment requires students to formulate problems, devise solutions, and interpret results. While field in a blank test, items can be used to check students' knowledge of some concepts and some of their skills. Other modes of assessment may be better for evaluating students' product and their choices of formulation or approach. 
this means that authentic assessment should increasingly become the basis for judgment mathematical achievement required for success in the technological world. Designing authentic assessment. The first one that we're going to discuss is the project based learning or PBL. Project based learning is a teaching method in which students gain knowledge and skills by working for an extended period of time to investigate and respond to an authentic, engaging, and complex question, problem, or challenge. In project based learning, Teachers make learning come alive for students. Students work on a project over an extended period of time from a week up to a semester that engages them in solving a real-world problem or answering a complex question. They demonstrate their knowledge and skills by creating a public product or presentation for a real audience. As a result, students develop deep content knowledge as well as critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, and communication skills. Project-based learning unleashes a contagious creative energy among students and teachers. The next one is the GRASPS framework. It is an authentic assessment design model to help you develop performance tasks, project units, and or inquiry lessons. The main takeaway is, is that teachers can use the GRASP assessment model too. The first one, engage students through contextualized learning. Second, provide simulations of real-world situations or challenges that adults might encounter. The third is create opportunities for students to practice transfer of learning. Fourth, foster curiosity and building experiences of students. The last, develop project management skills of students. CRASPS stands for Goal, Role, Audience, Situation, Product, Standards. Goal, it establishes the challenge, issue, or problem to solve. Role, it gives students a role that they might be taking in a familiar real-life situation. Audience, it identifies the target audience whom students are solving the problem for or creating the product for. Situation. Create the scenario or explain the context of the situation. Product. Paint a clear picture of the what and why of the product creation or the performance. Standards. Inform students how their work will be assessed by the assumed audience. There are three modes of authentic assessment. And the first one is observation. This includes the data and information that the teacher collects from daily work. In this mode, the teacher will conduct an observation to the students. He or she will observe the performance and the attitude of the students during and after the class. After the observation, the teacher can be able to identify the weakness and the strength of the students. The role of the teacher is to assess the students and to help the students improve themselves into a better one. We have here two observation-based assessment tools. Number one is the developmental checklist. It is an observation tool which requires the teacher recorder to describe the traits or learning behaviors being assessed. Number two, interview sheet. Another observation tool which is also called conference recording room. The second mode of authentic assessment is the performance sample. It is a tangible result that demonstrates student achievement. In this mode, the teacher will assess the student's performance or the product. The teacher will let the students pass a portfolio after the semester or year. In this condition, the teacher can determine if the student's performance is developing. One of the performance samples assessment tools is the portfolio. It is a compilation of pieces of evidence of an individual's skills, ideas, interests, and accomplishment. The third mode of authentic assessment is the actual performance. It tests and measures a student's performance at a specific place and time. In this mode, the teacher can assess the student 
by conducting actual performance such as singing, dancing, and acting. By that, the teacher can determine the behavior of the students during the performance. We have here three actual performance assessment tools. The first one is the performance checklist. It consists of a list of behavior that make up a certain type of performance. It is used to determine whether or not an individual behaves in a certain way when asked to complete a particular task. Next, oral questioning. It is an appropriate assessment method for actual performance when the objectives are to assess the student's stock knowledge and to determine the student's ability to communicate ideas in coherent verbal sentences. The third one is the observation and self-reports. It is used it use a tally, I mean, it used a tally sheet as device when used by the teacher to record the frequency of students' behavior, activities, or remarks.